this morning when we were singing the, um, uh, oh, what's the name of the song? The great, um, You Are the Great I Am. And it was like I was over there in the corner and I could just ha- hear all the culmination of the voices right where I was standing of all of you guys and, and all of us together. And it was so beautiful. I was just like we were all in unison and they were declaring together. And <clears throat> it was really neat because this is what I was going to talk about today um, just at the very beginning is, oh, actually, I have to set my timer. <laughs> <laughs> Not 40 minutes. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, okay. Well, I've got to talk fast. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I was driving one day, and I had gone the wrong way, so I had to make a U-turn. And bear with me here for just a moment. So I'm in my car, and I turn off to a side road, and I come to a point where I can make a U-turn. And so... As I'm approaching this area, there's a, a business on my right and a business on my left, and there, were, there was a car coming from the business um, on my left, and there was a car coming straight at me. And I'm like, I want to make a U-turn right here at this intersection. So I pull in to the right, and no one paused, no one skipped a beat. All three of us together at the same time just did this really cool thing. <laughs> There was no roundabout or anything. We all just went, and we all went on our merry ways. It was the coolest thing. And I'm, like, driving away, and I'm, like, that was so cool. <laughs> you know, and I'm, like, wow. I'm, like, I'm like really tripping. And I'm, like, why am I so happy? <laughs> like, that was just a silly thing. But yet, the Lord was showing me. I, you know, I was, like, God, why am I so happy about this? And he said, it's because you were synchronized. And when you were working together, you were working in sync together. And when you moved in sync, it brought glory to me. I don't know if they were Christians or not, but I was excited that I was moving in sync. And we, as the body of Christ, when we move in sync together, we are bringing glory to God like when we were singing together. It's so important for us to clap together. I know some of you can't, you know follow a beat, but that's okay, you know, but it says here, <laughs> I, well, I want to introduce to you a phrase that I, I started saying, and Luke's going to be like, oh, mom, <laughs> but I started saying this phrase, and I was like, come on, let's get in click, let's get in click, you know, it's like the beat, let's get in click, right, so anyway, so <clears throat> you probably will hear me say that, I think I came up with the word coolio, so if you ever said that, that was me. I started that. I'm just saying. <laughs> but in, let's look in our Bibles really quick to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. And while we are turning there, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you fill my mouth to speak, that you bring your word and your truth to the ears that are here, that they do not fall on closed ears or closed hearts, but those, these words fall on open ears and open hearts to receive your word today, to draw closer to you, to know you more in a deeper and intimate way. In Jesus' name, amen. And I was praying, and I'm like, I can't find Ephesians. (laughs) Excuse me. So, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, it says that we should no longer, uh, oh, I'm sorry, from whom the whole body, that's all of us, If you know Jesus, you're part of the body, right? Joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Because the growth of the body, or causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. You know, two key things, every joint supplies. Each and every single one of us is part of that joint in some way or another. Every single one of us supplies, no matter what you're doing, whether you're folding clothes for a garage sale or you are mowing the lawn or you are talking to someone about Jesus or you're preaching on a stage, every joint supplies. So we are all a part of the body, and when all of us are doing what God has called us to do, we are moving in sync with each other. We're flowing, and we're bringing glory to him. How many of you guys have ever played with Legos in your life? 
I know we have the kids here today, and some of them worked really hard at making this really cool thing. So there's like some stuff that's really working here. But, you know, it's kind of like the way Legos fit together, right? It's like getting clicked, right? We all fit together, right? <laughs> so just like Legos, how many of you guys have ever played with Legos? Let me see your hands. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Very neat. Um, how many of you have ever played with the other brand? <laughs> no. <laughs> So there is the real thing, and then there's counterfeit. Now, I put together this entire piece, piece, pieces, like a whole kit with Luke one year that he got for Christmas, and it was the other brand. <laughs> and it literally was a counterfeit. It was not the right thing. It was like when you put it together, they, they all fit together. You know, you put the, all the pieces together, follow the directions, all that kind of stuff. And then when you put it together, they started popping apart. And I was like, <clears throat> really? I was like, just go in, fit them back together. So I was like, oh. So the reason why I tell you that is because what does this have to do with going back to school? Because today is our back to school service. Woo woo, right? So how many of you guys are excited for school to start? <laughs> Parents, <laughs> teachers, <laughs> yay. I liked it because we got to start our schedule all over again, right? But. The reason why I talk about Legos and all that is because there is the real thing and then there's the counterfeit. And in the real thing, that's what the world needs. We, as the body of Christ, we can't just be saying, I went to VBS, so I'm a Christian. I, I did, I don't know, I went to camp. I even went forward for an altar call. I um, serve in the church. You know, all these things. It's kind of like kind of like this here, you know, we're doing all these things, doing, 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 right? And we let our light shine before the Lord, you know, and before the world, and, you know, it, okay, right? We're doing, doing, doing. But if it's not genuine, it's not knowing God, sorry, my microphone keeps falling. I wonder if I should, should I put it on my left ear? Would that be better? I don't know. Anyways, they need the genuine thing. God created us for one purpose and one purpose alone, and that is to know him. To know him. To know him genuinely, intimately, and to make him known to the world. And in our knowing him, we do. In our closeness with him, we can do. We can act. We can serve. We can do those things. If we're not genuine, we're like a flashlight, right? It's like, oh, I'm letting my light shine. It's kind of like, hey, it, it, it repels people. Like, I'm a Christian. Woohoo! But if it's not genuine, it's like the flashlight in your eyes. It's like, stop shining that, right? So when we're genuine, I have to do a little bit here. Got to get this over here because we've got to be safe. <laughs> when we share that fire of God that is lit on the inside of us, will it work? Praise the Lord. Well, <laughs> it's like a fire. <laughs> it all absorbed into it. I soaked it last night. Well, look how pretty it is. Praise the Lord. I don't know if it's going to light. It was pretty. <laughs> All right. Well, you can see <laughs> my flame. <laughs> it doesn't matter how big it is. If it's genuine, it's going to draw people to you. It's going to draw the world to who God is inside you. Praise the Lord. Do you see that? So let's not be that person that is out in people's face and saying, oh, you got to know God. I know Jesus. Do you know Jesus? But we actually share and we serve and we do because we're growing closer with him. How do we do that? How do we become closer with God? How do we know God? First and foremost, you got to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
Second of all, you do whatever you can to get in his word. You come to church, which you're here, you're the choir. <laughs> I'm speaking to you, right? You get to church, you hear his word, you experience his presence, you start to see who he is. You learn about Jesus and everything he's done for you, that he is the beloved of heaven, that God loves you, that he wants to know you in an intimate way. And all those things, when you're pursuing him and seeking after him, you listen to podcasts, whatever it is, you hear truth. And when you know truth and you hear truth, God is going to uh, line that up with his word. How many of you guys have your Bibles? Raise your Bibles up. <coughs> Excuse me. Say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. And I believe it. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am learning more about Jesus every day because I read my Bible. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what Pastor Mario says. When you hear the word of God, it's going to line up with the Bible. You might hear somebody say something. You have to know the truth. And when you hear that and you know the truth, you are going to be able to discern. You're, o you're going to be able to know that something's not quite right. You might have heard Pastor Mario this morning talk about the offering and what God does. Praise the Lord, our pastor preaches God's word. But we all have to be discerning. We all have to scrutinize. Sometimes we hear something and it's like, oh, that doesn't quite line up with something that I learned before. And so we look at the word. When we look at the word, we can see that's truth. I didn't know that before. You know, we hear about Pastor Mario teaching about prosperity and stuff, and it's like, oh, uh, prosperity, mess, you know, or, or healing or whatever it is. But when you look at the word, you say, oh, it does say that. It does say God wants me wealthy and he will prosper me. It does say that he wants me healthy and have a long life. It does say that. Or you could be in school and you could hear somebody say something. I'm talking to kids here for just a moment, right? And you could hear somebody say something and they say something just a little bit off. But when you know the truth, you recognize it. You recognize the truth. And when you as a body of Christ go in and you're genuine and you recognize what is a lie and what is truth, you will start to shine your light before men and you will draw them to you. So that's where I'm gonna end and I'm gonna leave the rest with Pastor Kevin. So thank you for hearing me this morning. And But this morning, um so education is very important, but this morning I want to I want to talk about some things about a journey because you as a student have a journey. Every single school year, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, every single school year had a different flavor. Amen. Every single school year had something different happen. Amen. And I know students when they show up the first day of school, they're like, "What's this year going to be like?" Everybody's sitting there, they're nervous. They're like, well, "What's it going to be like? What teacher do I have? What teacher do you have?" Well. This morning, it's about a journey. Every year has a specific journey for a student. And this morning, I brought up this backpack because um, me, I, as, a, as a person, I like to go hiking. I like to go camping and hiking. And so one of the things I do when I go camping and hiking is I, I take this bag, this, um, this bag that I take, and I like it because it kind of camouflage. But there's some things in this bag that I have, some things in this bag that I have um, that I bring out. And uh, one of them... stuff in a bag, then it gets crazy. One of the things I have, this is called a survival knife, amen? And so um, I had a pastor in Michigan that he, I used to call him Daniel Boone, because he loved being in the outdoors, and as an outdoorsman, he would take us rustic camping. He told us as staff members, you're all going rustic camping. <laughs> you're going to sleep in a tent. You're going to sleep on the ground, and we're going to be out in the middle of nowhere on a two-track where no one can get to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So there was a lot of faith involved in that. But one thing I learned is that life is a journey, amen? And part of that journey, when you go on a camping trip or you go on a, 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 a two-track, you go out in the middle of nowhere, 
you have what's called, you, you bring survival things, okay? And part of the survival things, this knife I have up here, it actually has a compass. And how many know what a compass does, amen? A compass has a lot of different things that it does. But when you're going out in the middle of nowhere, and I, I, I used to go on hiking trails and stuff like that, I had someone here when I just moved here recently ask me, say, Kevin, you've got to hike Long's Peak. I said, hike what? He said, you got to hike Long's Peak. I said, well, I, I do love altitude, but there is a limit to my altitude, okay? Uh, he said, no, you got to come with me. I've been like 10 times. I can show you how to go. I said, well, okay, well, you're going with me because I'm not going by myself up that mountain. Praise the Lord. How many know if you were to climb Long's Peak, it's probably not wise if it's your first time to go by yourself? You might not come back alive. There's a thing called a guide. Go to John chapter 16, verse 13. John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit of truth there is the Holy Spirit. Now, it says he will guide. I want to focus on the term guide here. Have you ever noticed that when you go on a trail that you're not familiar with, in a place that you don't know where you're going, when you're with a guide, you have the security and the sense to know that that guide's going to lead you where you need to go, amen? He's not going to lead you astray. And here's the thing, a lot of us as young people, you're, you're, you're going to be on a journey this school year. The encouragement is that you uh, drop with, you, you go with the Holy Spirit, you allow him to guide you, to direct you. And here's the thing about a guide, you don't have to know where you're going. You don't have to know everything about the trail. You don't have to know exactly where the destination is going to plant you, Amen. You don't have to know everything. Now, you do know your destination as a Christian where you're going to heaven. But beyond that, you don't have to know all the details of the trail. Amen? And I think a lot of times as young people, you're worried, well, what class should I take? Where should I go? Well, should I play this sport? Well, should I go to this college? Well, should I? The guide on the inside is there to direct you. Who should I reach out to? Who should I talk to in my halls? The guide is there to direct you. And that's the cool thing about a guide is you don't have to know everything of where to go and how to do it. Amen? So God has given us a guide. This school year, God's given you a guide wherever he's called you to be and to go. Amen? And here's the thing about that guide is that you don't have to rely on yourself. You don't have to know everything. And here's the thing. Uh, one thing about a, 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 a compass you know, when you're going on a trail or whatever, you, you, it's good to take a compass. Why is it good to take a compass? It's good to take a compass because a compass will help you to make sure you're in the right direction. Amen? And here's the thing. The Holy Spirit's also like a compass. And here's the thing. With a compass, there's a thing. That, you know, the earth, this planet that we're on, it's one big, huge ball of magnetic force. Okay? It's a big magnet. It's a gigantic, big, round magnet is what our earth is. Now, here's the thing. With that magnetic force, with compasses, it always points the direction north. You ever notice that? It always points it north. It always directs you. It always magnetizes to where's north. And here's the thing. With God, when you have the Holy Spirit inside you and you let the guide on the inside, the Holy Spirit, direct you, he's always going to point you north to what God has for your life. And here's the thing, if you're not with the guide, you're not hanging out with the guide, if you get off from the guide, guess what happens? You get lost. It's pretty simple. God says, I've given you the Holy Spirit to guide you, to direct you when you walk in those halls and you talk to your teachers on what words to say, how to say them, where to go, and how to do things. God has given you that this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Here's the thing. It says, God says, um, God's given us, and I like to put it this way, but but there's some things that God's given us. God's given us a spiritual school, amen? I like to, you know, some of you guys might look at it a different way, but this is the way I look at it, okay? This is the way I do it, the way I look at it, okay? Just like a natural school, God's given us a spiritual school, amen? And he's given us some things to do. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, it says, therefore, and this is the Amplified, it says, therefore, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy or distracted. Did you know worry can distract you? Hello, Amen saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Or where are we going to wear? How many young people ever had a little thought conversation with yourself in the morning looking at the mirror before going to school saying, what should I wear today? Amen. You might look at me and say, well, you got craziness going on there. Well, here's the thing. That's okay because I stopped worrying about <laughs> – I had a brother, I praise the Lord. I won't tell you which brother. But I had a brother that he would spend numerous hours in front of the mirror focusing on how his hair went a certain way and where it went. I just said, you know, I'm putting a hat on. I'm getting out the door. Amen. That's why I got a shaved head and he's got hair today. But anyway, praise the Lord. Ah, but 
Here's the thing. God's given us. It says, what is drink? But eager, but for the pagan, the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. In other words, they worry about all these things. They get all distracted about all these things. But do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. He knows you got needs. God knows you got needs. You might say, well, what I got needs? God knows you got needs. Amen? And God knows, and he's going to fulfill those needs. But if you do one thing, here's a, check this out. Verse 33, it says, if you do this one thing, it says, but first and foremost, importantly, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his ways and doing being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. Ever notice that God says, put me first and everything else just falls into place? What does that mean? That means you got to seek him first every day. Students, I encourage you, you got to get up 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes early every morning. I know it's painful. Hell, hello, I got a flesh too. I like to sleep, amen? But if you got to get yourself up and say, flesh, shut up, I'm getting up this morning, and start spending some time with God before you step out those doors, God will start showing you things and everything else, your classes, everything else will fall right into place, amen? Because that's God's plan, plan for your life. That's what God has set up for his school. Secondly, we cannot forsake the assembling together. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. It says, let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another in love to do good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes we have to miss things come up, family stuff come up. That's all cool. But here's the thing. If we're continually missing God's instruction over and over again, what's going to happen? We're going to be getting instruction somewhere else, amen? Praise the Lord, because what you put your time in with is what you're going to become, amen? That's what God is trying to say here. He's saying, don't forget assembling together. Here's the thing. I, I actually got a chance to minister to a football team here recently talking about unity. And the one thing I talked about unity is that if you're not encouraging each other at some point, you're not going to have unity. Amen? That's why God says, I want to unify my church so we can encourage each other. We can't encourage each other if we don't come together. Amen? How in the world are you going to get encouragement and the other person get encouragement unless you come together? Here's the thing. God has this plan set up so that we can encourage one another. Here's the thing. A lot, the problem with our Western world, a lot of times, and we got to look at this, is we spend a lot of time developing our minds at the expense of our spirits. And here's the thing. We talk about this a lot of time. I've been on the mission field. A lot of people talk about third world countries, how the, we see signs and wonders and miracles over there. But why don't we see them as much here in the United States? Well, here's the thing. Th those third world countries, they spend a lot of time developing their spirits at, at, the, at the sacrifice of their minds. Here's the thing. we got to spend time developing our spirit man first, and then God will put everything together. Amen? It's good to develop our, our minds, but it's also important to develop our spirit man. God has set up his church as a spiritual classroom. Amen? That's why God set up. He set up his own spiritual school, his own spiritual classroom. Amen? And here's the thing. I like to say it this way. Jesus is the superintendent. Amen? And he's a good superintendent. You don't have to go and complain to him about things going on in the school district, amen, because the heavenly school district, we've got it all together. And they don't have to raise taxes or do no more bonds to fund things. God's got it all taken care of, amen. He's got his plan, his school system. And guess what? Our principal is Pastor Mario, amen, the original Super Mario. Thank you, Jesus. He's got, he's, our, he's the principal, amen. And guess what? Class starts at 8.30 a.m. Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning, and 7 p.m. Wednesday night for students and, and adults. Amen? And here's the thing. I want to encourage you. Don't be late to class. Amen? And here's the thing. I, I like to say this all the time. I actually ran into a coach that, that actually coached one of my brothers in high school basketball. And he said, your brother had so much talent. My older brother, he could, he could, um, he could do a, a slam dunk from the free throw line almost. He could slam dunk it. He was really tall. He could do 360 dunks, all this stuff. And he said he had so much talent, but he couldn't get his grades up to be eligible. You want to know why he couldn't get grades up? He couldn't get to class. He couldn't get to class, and when it took time to take the test, he wasn't able to pass the test. Here's the thing. The enemy is going to throw test your way, whatever you do with God. But here's the thing. If you're always missing class, there's no way you're going to have a spiritual advantage to pass the test because life is full of tests, and the enemy is going to throw tests at you to see whether you believe what you really believe. Amen? So here's the thing I want to encourage you. Don't miss class as much as you can. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, sometimes we've got to miss here, but don't miss class. Amen? 
And, and here's the thing. The practical interns, your homework, your homework every week with the classroom, your homework every week is spending your personal time with God. That's your homework. That's your homework. Every morning is your homework. Five, ten minutes. So spend some, here's the funny thing. We, <laughs> praise the Lord. That's the time when you can get those studies down and know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. That's what God has in place. That's how you know it, by doing your homework. Amen. The practical internship assessment test, that is Project Serve, getting out there and serving. It's also, hey, students, you can start a Bible club at your school. You can start a prayer circle in your commons if you want to. Guess what, students? You have more rights than you think you do. You have more abilities and more advantages than you think you'd have. You can get out there, and you can see God do powerful things with you. Amen? There is a lot of opportunities. Praise the Lord. I'm going to keep going here. I'll just I'll be wrapping it up here shortly. Third, praise the Lord. We must be led by the Spirit of God each and every day. I had a pastor here when I grew up. He taught me this and, it, and drilled it into my mind. I mean, he drilled it, he drilled it, and I'm glad he drilled it into my mind. I heard it over and over and over again in, cl in class on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. He said, your decisions, each and one of your, every one of your little, even the most smallest decision determines your direction, and your direction will eventually determine your destiny. Here's the thing. Let me give you a little advantage here. A little uh, word here this morning, being led by the Spirit, a testimony. Now, this was what God had for my life. It may not be the same with you. God may lead you to do something even different or even more crazy. I don't know. For me, this was crazy. But when I was uh, going my junior year, I had just turned my life to the Lord, and the Lord told me, I want you to quit playing football. I said, quit what? I said, Lord, that's my hobby, man. That's my favorite. My, I love football, okay? That's my game, okay? Basketball ain't my game, okay? I ain't playing that. But God, football was my game. And God says, I want you to quit football. I said, okay, Lord, you're right. You are in charge. It's not my life. This is your life to do what you want with it. So I quit football. Went through a lot of craziness with that. Quit football. Guess what, God, at the end of my junior year, God goes, I got another thing for you to do. I said, really? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He says, I want you to transfer high schools to your crosstown rival your senior year. I said, you got to be what? I said, Lord, the pizza up there is a little crazy. You might want to, you know, do a little different toppings or something. Anyway, I was just kidding. But seriously, I, me and God had a conversation, okay? And I had a little bit of attitude, but the Lord says, I want you to transfer from Skyline to Longmont. And back then, that's like oil and water. They don't mix, okay? You don't transfer from Skyline to Longmont. That just doesn't work right, okay? You may go to Niwot, that's okay, but not Longmont, praise the Lord, okay? These are heated rivals. Just like going from a Broncos fan to a Raiders fan. It don't equate, praise the Lord. That just doesn't make any sense. And God told me to do that. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll do that. Now I was over there my senior year. I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm being led of God. I'm reaching other students. There's a couple of students we were able to reach and see God do great things with us. Some students I brought to the youth ministry got saved. All kinds of cool stuff happened. But I still thought to myself, what was the point of that, Lord? Seriously? For one year? That doesn't make any sense to me. And, and over the years, I, sat, I kept thinking about kept thinking about, well, guess what? 20 years later, 18 to 20 years, somewhere in there, 20 years later, the Lord brings me back to Longmont. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm back in Longmont. Very cool. Well, guess what? God opens a door for me to be directly into Longmont High School. And then I'm sitting and praying about two, three weeks ago, and the Lord woke me up in prayer, and he says, Kevin, do you remember when I told you to transfer high schools? It's because I was preparing you 20 years ago to get ready for what you're doing right now. Here's the thing. Young people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down for young people. You've got to be led by the Spirit. It's so important when you get into your high schools and your middle schools. Be led by the Spirit because when you are led by the Spirit, God will show you and do things with it that may not, may, not have any, may not make sense right now. It may not make no sense to you in high school, but when you get to be older, when you 10, 15, 20 years down the road, something may occur. God may, may be part of God's plan for your life that you never thought possible that God will do in your life. Romans chapter 8, verse 14, real quick as I end. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoptions as son, the spirit producing sonship by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit that we believers are children of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs. Also, heirs of God, fellow heirs of the Christ, sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance, if indeed we share his, in his suffering, so that we may also share in his glory. For I consider, from a standpoint of faith, that the sufferings of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed in us. Here's the thing. 
we as Western culture, we look at things through, through an eyeglass of now, now, now. And we need to start looking at things through the, the eyeglass of what God sees, that God's got a plan in the future for us. God's got a plan that he wants to fulfill. Here's the thing. This right here is a thermometer. What does a thermometer do, young people? A thermometer detects and goes with the temperature of the atmosphere. A thermometer reacts to the atmosphere and tells you what the atmosphere is. A thermostat does something completely different. A thermostat changes the atmosphere. My question to you as a young person this year, this school year, are you going to step out of the shire just like Frodo, hello, in Lord of the Rings? Are you going to take a step out of the shire of com comfortability and being comfort this year? And, and are you gonna, are you going to be a thermostat or are you just going to be a thermometer and go with whatever the atmosphere is like in your schools? Or are you going to be a thermostat and change the atmosphere of your schools this year? Amen. I believe we have some world changers in this youth ministry. I believe we have some world changers in this student ministry. And I believe this year we're going to see God do powerful, powerful things right here in our midst in the city of Longmont and St. Vrain Valley School District. Amen. God has got you. God's behind you. God bless you, students. Pastor, come on up.